Hi, today I'll be talking about how to calculate the volume with the use of double integrals in polar form. Start by understanding how to convert from Cartesian or rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates. Remember that r squared equals x squared plus y squared, tangent theta equals y over x, and from polar to rectangular, it's x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta. Instead of adding up little rectangles to make up an area and solving it, solving the volume with x and y, we will instead be dividing the graph using polar squares similar to the spaces in between a spider web or use r and theta to represent our variables. As you can see from the visual, as the partitions of the polar graph become more and more small, our r and theta become more and more small, they actually become a better and better approximation of the area. You can also see that our bounds of integration will be different from rectangular or Cartesian coordinate systems because our bounds of integration will actually be from A to B for R for a polar rectangular region where R is a constant and from alpha to beta for theta. So we learn from basic geometry, the area of a section of a circle equals to one half theta r squared. So to find the infinitesimally small change in the area of r or our d of a, we will find that it will actually be r dr d theta. Logistically, if we were trying to find the area of a section between two radiuses, a bigger radius, which is r2, and a small radius, r1, or in our integration will show as from a to b, we can calculate that the change in A will equal R, the change in R, and the change in theta. Consider a kth box whose base is a polar rectangular square and its corresponding height is F of RK and theta K. The volume actually equals F of RK and theta K times its change in area with the DA that we found before for k equals 1 to infinity. Therefore, the volume of the solid region beneath the surface z equals f of r and theta is approximately v equals to about the summation from k equals 1 to n of that volume. Based on this information, we can conclude that the double integral of the function f of r and theta with respect to r dr d theta equals to the volume of the solid for polar regions. To calculate, first convert all information that's given to you from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates or draw out your picture in 2D. For a polar rectangular region where r is a constant from a to b, the greater r or r2 will always be the upper bound and the little r or r1 will always be the lower bound of the inner integral with respect to r. And the outer integral will have the bounds of the surface with respect to theta from alpha to beta. For a polar general region where h theta is greater than g theta, the greater r or h theta will always be the upper bound. And the bottom curve, or g theta, will always be the lower bound of the inner integral with respect to r. And the outer integral will have the bounds of the surface with respect to theta from alpha to beta. I hope my video was helpful in your understanding on how to calculate the volume with double integrals in polar form. Thanks for watching.